All right, beautiful humans, let's talk about dot plots some more. So now we're just gonna compare two of them to each other. So real quick, a dot plot is a visual display of data. It uses a number line. The data that repeats itself the most is called the mode. It's the most frequent. I feel like we already went through this, so that's great for us. Variability or the spread of the data, y'all know this already, is the range and the interquartile range. We will take the interquartile range with box plots, not so much dot plots. We don't really do that with dot plots too much, but there it is. So the shape of the dot plot, we do look at that. If it's symmetrical, it's going to be on a bell curve that looks pretty symmetrical. If it's skewed right, then that means there's not a lot of data on the right. So it's kind of backwards of what you would think. If it's skewed left, same thing as skewed right, skewed left, there's not a lot of data on the left. It means most of the data is on the right. I don't know why that is. I'm not the one that made this up, but I am the one that's telling you this. So think of it as just like a little bit backwards. All right, now we're going to compare the two. So we have two dot plots. We are comparing them. I have Jamal and I have Kendall. Both number lines look like it is describing feet. So they measure the distance of a race car over 10 trials. So there should be 10 numbers each. All right, the first thing I'm thinking I should do is pull off this data from the dot plot. So I have five, five, I have four, six, four sixes, excuse me, I burped. I have two sevens, an eight, and a 10. For Kendall's, I start at seven. You know what, let me use a different color. I have one seven, one eight, three nines, four tens, and one 11. Okay, I'm also gonna do some quick mental math. If I have two fives, together that makes 10. If I have four sixes, four times six is 24. Two times seven is 14, and I know that's eight, and I know that's 10. Same thing with Kendall's. Another seven, that's eight. Three times nine is 27. Four times 10 is 40. It'll just make, it'll just make doing math later on easier if I can just you know quickly do the math now. All right, Jamal's, we are finding the median mode range and shape of the data. So median, that is the middle guy. So I'm gonna mark them off one at a time until I reach the middle. Oh, I have two sixes in the middle. If I have two sixes, if I have two numbers in the middle, I take the average. So six plus six. Oh, I'm on the wrong guy. There we go. Six plus six is 12 divided by two is six, which makes sense, yeah, because they're both six. Duh. All right, from mode, I'm looking for the tallest tower, which is six, or the most frequent number, still six, so the mode is six. Range, I'm doing the maximum minus the minimum. So my largest is 10, my smallest is five. Therefore my range is five. Shape, I do like to outline the dot plot so I can see what it looks like, and it looks like it is skewed right. All right, let's do the same thing to Kendall. All right, Ms. Kendall, love that we don't have to find the mean. That helps. All right, Ms. Kendall, median. Again, I'm gonna mark them off until I reach the middle value. I have nine and 10 in the middle. So I'm gonna add nine plus 10 and divide by two, which equals 9.5, which is also halfway between nine and 10, right? 9.5, I feel like that makes sense. Mode, I am finding the tallest tower, which is 10, or the most frequent number. Easy peasy. Range, I'm taking the maximum minus the minimum. My range is four, so it's a tighter set of data. And then I'm going to outline this so I can kind of see what it looks like. Hmm. You know, I guess this is skewed left, but I almost want to say it's symmetrical. You know, I would argue for both. I'm going to write skewed left slash symmetrical. Because if, if a kid challenged me on this and they said, hey, miss, looks symmetrical, I'd be like, yeah, you're right. It does kind of look symmetrical. You know, but it also kind of looks skewed left. So 
you know, we're going skewed left first. All right, which of the conclusions best supports the dot plots? Let me zoom out a little bit so we can see the whole thing. A, both Jamal's and Kendall's race cars had an equal spread. Meaning, is their range the same? Well, five is not the same thing as four, so that's a lie. On average, Kendall's race car traveled further. We don't really know the average, but we do know the median, and Jamal's median was six, and Kendall's was 9.5. So you know what? I'm going to come back to that one. See, the median distance Jamal's race car traveled was 6.5. Well, that's not true. It was six. We did the math on that. D, both Jamal and Kendall had the same mode. Well, six is not the same thing as 10, so that can't be true, which means I'm gonna have to go with B as my answer. And that does kind of make sense, right? Because on average, Kendall's numbers are larger than Jamal's numbers. That makes sense to me. All right, flip your page. Now we're looking at Mrs. Jameson's class and Mr. Zimmerman's class. And we are comparing the number of TVs per household. Okay, we can do this. So I am not going to pull them off the dot plot because that's a lot of numbers to write. But I am going to add them above the dot plot. So I have three zeros, but I added together equals zero. I have one, two, three, four, five, six ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, two. Seven times two is 14. One, two, three, four, five times three is 15. One, two, that's 16, that's five, and that's six. You know, I guess I don't really have to do that, right? Because I'm not finding the average. You know what, we're gonna do it anyway because I've already started. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Five times two is 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times three is 24. One, two, three is 12, five, 12, and 14. Wow, okay, so the median. If you want to find the median while it's still on the dot plot, we're just going to mark them off one at a time going back and forth. So like zero, six, zero, five, zero, four. Going back and forth until we reach our middle dots. Which actually I can stop there because if I keep marking them off, it doesn't really matter. My answer is going to be two. So I know my median is two. Same thing for Mr. Zimmerman's. Gonna mark them off one at a time. Starting from the beginning, going to the end. And I can actually stop there because I can keep marking them off, but I'm gonna land in the threes. All right, my mode, I'm looking for my tallest tower for both. So here my mode is two. And Mr. Zimmerman's, my mode is three. So Jameson's is two, Zimmerman's is three. Looks like we have a pattern going on here. All right, my range is maximum minus minimum. So my max is six, right? Because there's a dot above the six. There is no dot above the seven. That's just what the number line says. But there's no data there. Minus zero, which equals six. But there is data above Mr. Zimmerman's seven. So this is seven minus zero, which is seven. All right, shape. I like to outline this. It just kind of helps. All righty. Um, Mr. Sorry, Mrs. Jameson's class looks skewed right, right? Because most of the data, yeah, most of the data is on the left side. So I'm gonna say this is skewed right. But again, with Mr. Zimmerman's class, I would argue that that's symmetrical because three is almost in the middle, but it could also argue that it's skewed right. I'm gonna say it's symmetrical. It looks pretty symmetrical to me. Pretty in the middle. Okay, we're gonna go through true or false. We did all of our analyzing and now we are actually going to read and figure out what is this saying. So, the range of the number of TVs per household in Mrs. Jameson's class, so the range of Mrs. Jameson's, six, is less than the range of Mr. Zimmerman's. 
Well, that's definitely true because six is less than seven. That makes sense. All right, the median of TVs per household is equal in both Mrs. Jameson's and Mr. Zimmerman's. So the median is two equal to three. No, so that's false. The mode of TVs per household for both is three. So the mode for Jameson's is two, Mr. Zimmerman's is three. So again, that's false. So yeah, that's, that's it guys. If you have any questions, ask your teacher. All we're doing is comparing the dot plots. Uh, yeah, that's it.